I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIM TV. Without further ado, 2010 Lincoln Park, A Thousand, Thousand Sons. Sons. Here we are, Lincoln Park's fourth full length. Um, what what can I say? This is a band in a tough spot. I'll get more into that a little later. Uh, but I want you, I want everybody to know two things. One, Lincoln Park have changed their sound sound yet again. This sounds like Muse, Coldplay, and Nine Inch Nails to me. Not your typical Lincoln Park. Or at least old school, right? Mm -hmm. you'd, you'd go with me? Not new metal, nothing like that. Now, that aside, this is also a concept album. And it's about nuclear war. There's some, some transitional songs with quoting what, that play some uh, vocal speeches from, from Oppenheimer. And, and, and it's all about the theme of nuclear war, war. But let me tell you something. I, I'm a big guy. I love concept albums. But I'll tell you, I don't really get into concept albums when the lyrics are shit. <laughs> and, and I feel like... The lyrics on this album are shit. I'm just gonna stop there. They're not always shit, but a lot. Of, there's some significant shit lyrics on this album, and that makes me all of a sudden not give a rat's ass about uh, about the um, about the concept. Now, um, I'll, I'll briefly touch on this, and then I'm gonna turn it to Tom because this man, this is this is a train, a steam engine right here. Okay, he's fuming about this album because Tom's a big Linkin Park fan and I gave up on Linkin Park after Meteor because I thought that Meteor was a step down. I know I'm, I'm kind of alone in that feeling, but um, I, I feel like every album has been a step down. I do feel like this is uh, the best thing since Meteor, I, uh, which means Minutes to Midnight. It beats that for me. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, but, but real quick, I just want to outline my kind of position is that I think that one thing that Linkin Park fans and, and music critics in general should take into account is just how tough a position Linkin Park is in. This is a band that defined themselves by having a new metal yet rap rock sound. And they got huge, multi-platinum, one of the best-selling rock outfits of the last 20 years. And, and, and they had two kick-ass albums that just went like multi-platinum. And then they disappeared for a few years and came back with a really cheesy, from what I hear, shitty album. I honestly never listened to it because I just heard it was crap and gave up on it. Uh, and here we are reviewing A Thousand Sons in 2010. They're trying something new. Um, uh, you're trying to put some con conceptuality behind it and still, while still retaining, you know, Mike Shinoda and Chester Pennington, that's how you say his name, Bennington, yeah. right? Uh, you know, they're still there, they're still doing, you know, Mike Shinoda's still more rhythmic vocals, and while it's not quite, quite rap, it's still very rhythmic, and Chester's still more industrial screaming and singing. Um, it's still there, but they're, but they're taking it new ways. Now, unfortunately, the, the way that they're taking it is electronic. And that's a fad right now that's being beaten to death, like 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 a, a, a person who just really wants to abuse an animal, you know, that just taking it to this level that's just way too extreme, Michael Vick, and 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 it it's. And it makes sense for Linkin Park to do that just because I think that, you know, that's the only thing that could really fit their sound and, and that they could easily accommodate on stage and keep Han in the band. Tom, take it away. Alright, first off, I like Linkin Park. I love Hybrid Theory. Reanimation I thought was really cool. They have a lot of guest artists on that, did a lot of cool stuff. Uh, and, and then Meteora I even liked. Minutes to Midnight I thought was crap. I'll talk about that another time. This album... Uh, it was tough for me. Now here, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go, I got a big old page of notes here that I want to talk about. So I'm gonna start with the few good things because that's a short list for me. Uh, uh, here's the deal. A Thousand Suns, overall, uh, it's 15 tracks, six of them are shorter, kind of interlude, moody tracks, and then nine of them are actual fleshed out songs, alright? Now, that's turning a lot of people off. A lot of people are saying, what is this, 15 tracks and only 9 of them are like real songs? Well, just shut up, because that's actually a good thing. It shows that they're finally conceptualizing their music and making an album, because almost everything else that they've come out with hasn't really been an album. It's been a bunch of radio hits, uh, or songs that feel like they're meant to be radio hits. So for them to Which finally is... focus their sound on something consistent and conceptualized... And, and that's why that's why I was pointing out how tough yeah. of a spot this band is in. So the fact that there's the theme is cool. The fact that the first two songs are short and set up the album is cool. Uh, another thing that they do with the theme that's cool is some repeated lyrics. Uh, now, the lyrics are not that great on the whole, but... 
Uh, it's cool that they're kind of sprinkling some repeated lines here and there. Obviously, very Nine Inch Nails influence. That's something that, that Trent Reznor did on the Downward Spiral, my favorite album of all time. So, of course, I'm going to pick up on that, and I kind of like that. Another Nine Inch Nails-esque thing that they do here is with some of the production. There's some cool kind of noisiness in the beats and the guitars at times, uh, some of that industrial rock aspects, and I think that's really cool that they're trying to incorporate that. Uh, also, like I said, I really like the transitional songs uh, in between there. I think they do a good job of making the album flow instead of the, having the songs just stop dead. Uh, and also I think Mike Shinoda shines on this album. That's it. Now on to the bad stuff. 75% of the lyrics are horrible. Uh, a lot of the electronic beats, which there's pretty much no real drums on here besides like When They Come For Me, which has some kind of like Indian type drumming stuff to it. Um, but really, for the most part, it's just weak electronic dancey beats. I don't know why. Um, you get into track three, Burning in the Skies, that's the first real song. And I'm like, okay, this song's about, this album's about nuclear war. I listen to the first two tracks, it's really ominous, builds it up. And then it gets into the chorus of Burning in the Skies. It could have been on Coldplay's X and Y. What happened? What happened there? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't know that, I didn't know we were supposed to be dancing about nuclear war. I didn't know that would solve the problem. <laughs> I didn't, I did all of a sudden, a da 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 da, and I'm like, what are we doing here? What, is this supposed to be a dark album? Why are, why are we dancing all of a sudden? Why am I going, mm -ts, mm -ts, mm -ts, mm -ts. it doesn't make any sense. There's like no real drums on this. It's a very poppy take on a dark theme, something that's supposed to be dark and heavy and sad. People being blown up by nuclear war. But instead we're like, uh, oh yeah. And then, okay, so just overall, the execution of the theme I thought was weak. It was not dark enough. A lot of these tracks sound dancey, yet they're still supposed to be heavy. It doesn't make any sense. That's something you get from a remix album. If this was a remix album, it would be better. Because tracks like Blackout, which is just a vomit sandwich, it just would actually make sense. Because it'd be like, oh, this song was once heavy, and now it's now it's electronic and, and glitchy beats. Like a rave. Yeah, that would make sense. But instead... No, you get this, like, gay kind of Depeche Mode keyboard thing. I'm not calling Depeche Mode gay. I actually love Depeche Mode. But I'm just saying, it sounds gay in that song. Um, uh, you get that, and then you get this, like, dancey beat in the chorus, and Chester's screaming at you. I'm like, where are the driving drums? Where are the heavy-ass guitars? They come in the bridge, which is kind of cool, the only redeeming part of the song, but doesn't make up for the crappy dance part of the chorus. It is not a heavy song. The vocals are the only heavy part of that song. So for you to say that that song hauls ass or is, is heavy in any way, you, you're just lying to yourself and because you can't have just one aspect of the song be heavy to call it a hardcore song. And they, they really sold this as, as still a, a kind of a, a heavier album than Minutes to Midnight. And since I didn't listen to it, I can't really say. But it's definitely not a heavy album. And they did sell this up. And, and Tom, you have a note here that says there's a lack of low end yes, on this album. Yes, that's another that's one of my complaints. I, that is a complaint. A lot of that's mid range and high end. That, that's something that was present on the earlier stuff yeah. that I liked um, that, that had some redeeming factors to like it. There's, there's hardly any bass guitar now, on this album. Now, now a lot of people are going to feel the way Tom feels. I'm going to argue real quickly, not that I actually feel this way because I'm pretty I'm very neutral on this album actually but but what a lot of people are gonna say and fans of this album are gonna say is that while the concept is dark and you could have made a dark evil uh, sounding album all about the destruction of man and everything there's also some beauty to it too and maybe mm -hmm. they were trying to capture the beauty I get lots of cold play it's like Brian Eno was in on this <laughs> And, and this really sounds like uh, something that happened with Coldplay when they came out. Oh, I'm blanking on the album name. Viva La Vida. Um, uh, and, and it really kind of sounds like that for me. And, and there's some, some tracks. Track 8, Waiting for the End, I think is just... That track alone, by itself, a beautiful track. One of... It, hands down, my favorite Linkin Park track I've ever heard. Wow. And, and I really just love that track. Um, and, and it's a standout on the album. Uh, real quick, Tom, uh, my other track picks were Wisdom, Justice, and Love, track 11, that's a short interlude, and then the single, The Catalyst. There's one more thing I want to say real quick, and that's this. A lot of people are going to try to justify this album and say that it's good because they're trying to do something different. Well, you know what? Different, yeah, it's true that they're doing something different, but here's the thing you got to realize. Doing something different is not 
a sound argument for its quality. Different is a relative statement. It's not an absolute qualitative statement. You can't say that just because it's different, it's good. If I made five albums of me farting and then came out with an album of me puking, it would be different, but it would not be good. Now, that's not what they've done here, but just to prove the point, it, you, that's not an argument for this album because it's different, but I feel like it's a step down. It, it, and you're, you're absolutely right. I do feel like, I do like that they're doing something different though because it shows that they're trying and maybe someday they'll get it. I doubt it because, you know, they're really all about sales and record labels and that's fine, but I, it, I, that to me just is what's going to hinder them from really hitting it big and, and making a solid album. Mm -hmm. uh, and and in, to your credit, they would probably be better off going, mm -hmm. doing something like brand new I uh, did with Daisy. I just, I just hate the danciness. It's like they were trying to be heavy, but still trying to market to like fourteen-year-old girls that want to dance. Well, and and that's that is an issue. And when you have a record label involved, that will happen. Even sure. if they had more control over this album, which I, mm -hmm. I posted a twenty-two-minute interview down there that actually shows that they did seemingly have much more control there's over an, this album. But it's still who they're writing. There's the an for. article that I saw that compares this with Kid A, as far as reinvention. Yeah, I read that. Oh, <laughs> depressing. Uh, anyways, my track picks were track two, The Radiance. It's a kind of an opening track, but it actually does a good job of setting a powerful mood that they don't follow up on. Uh, track five, When They Come For Me, and track eight, Waiting For The I end. totally disagree on track five, by the way. I gotta throw this in there. I thought that was the cheesiest, worst track on the album. I thought Shinoda's lyrics just sucked, and I thought <laughs> that saying motherfucker is completely against what Linkin Park's foundation was of having rap that doesn't swear, mm -hmm. and I thought it was cheesy. Also, throughout the album, there's a lot of, oh, 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 yeah, oh, just, like modern-day fucking hip-hop. terrible. It, it just makes me angry, and I actually thought that, while Shinoda did sh shine at times, that he also was one of the main things holding this album back. Really? Okay. Um, overall, Tom, I, I, I'm going to go 64 on this. I I'm, I'm, have a feeling you're going to go low. I'm going to go 52. Okay. Um, I, I thought that this this needs work. It's it's clearly got some some problems, but you know overall, I I can kind of dig some of it, and the concept I appreciate. Mm -hmm. I know I still wouldn't recommend it, but yeah, I I probably wouldn't too. I mean, if if you got an album like this, I can give you if you like concept, if you like things like this and what Linkin Park's trying to do, I can give you a number of albums off the top of my head. Nine Inch Nails, Downward Spiral, or Year Zero, Year Zero by Nine Inch Nails. Either one of those two, two Nine Inch Nails, just go check out Nine Inch go Nails. Go listen to New Order. And, and um, if you really like concept and want to get into it, my favorite album of all time now is is the Decemberist Hazards of Love. Go listen to that. Um, I think that those albums would be a much better thing if that's what if you if you're saying you like concept albums, then go do it um, and listen to those. But that that kind of wraps it up for me. All right. Yep. Uh, what do you think? There's, I mean, we took a long time on this one. Do you guys like this? Do you like the transition? I mean, we brought up a couple different arguments here, and uh, I'm sure we're still going to find people that disagree with us, even though we think we covered it all. Mm -hmm. But we were interested in your opinions, um, especially when you can back them up. Let us leave us a comment down there. We want to talk about this album. Dialogue. Yep. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. We are VIMTV. Moving. Music. Critique. Forward.